my proposal tackles the creation of an international bioweaponry reporting system. In a world of increasing interconnectivity, an outbreak anywhere is a threat everywhere. In less than 24 hours, a deadly bioengineered pathogen can be spread across the entire world, risking public health and global security. Without a proper system to monitor and detect these threats before they come up, the next pandemic could be right under our nose. Although international efforts to bolster biosecurity have been created with the Biological Weapons Convention, or BWC, there is a failure to verify compliance with these protocols. This has been seen in past precedent of states such as the Soviet Union, Iraq, and South Africa, all violating this with their biological weapons programs that were conducted over multiple years, yet went undetected. And with greater access to knowledge and resources, terrorist programs also have the ability to use bioweapons against unsuspecting populations. We can see that having an inability to ethically report and monitor these bioweapons is an extreme cause for concern. Even if someone did want to report a bioweapon, they're not sure where to turn. Thus, we propose the creation of a bioweapon reporting system, or BRS. This would take place in three parts, submission, evaluation, and action. First, for submission, we want to make sure that there's a worldwide accessibility onto our reporting platform, with security being central and integral to maintaining a key encrypted platform so people can share information without fear of getting caught. Secondly is evaluation. Once a report has been submitted, it goes through a pre preliminary assessment, which is conducted by a computer model to eliminate fraud, then deferring to an expert panel. This panel of the BRS will use the framework of credibility, evidence, plausibility, impact, and reasoning in order to make its decision about whether or not this is a viable threat. Finally, it moves on to the third stage, action. If it is determined to be a viable threat, it's passed on to review for the UN Secretary General's office, who can then call for a task force to investigate into the matter. Our proposed structure for the BRS would follow something similar to how the OPCW, or Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, uses for the Chemical Weapons Convention. Instead of working directly within the BWC, instead, the BRS works with the United Nations as part of the proposed Joint Assessment Mechanism, which is another platform used to monitor data and track the surveillance of new bioweapons being created. It would be under this in order to work with the UN and secure against any biological weapons that were being developed, similar to how the OPCW works with the Chemical Weapons Convention. It's important to consider some potential risks or failures of this model. The first main one is the fear of repercussions by whistleblowers. We attempt to tackle this by using anonymous reporting systems with key cybersecurity protocols, as well as providing accommodations upon request if the whistleblower is, wishes to escape their home country. Next, as for the lack of funding and awareness, we want to make sure that we have the key signatories and approval of BWC members to verify this program, and, and we also have the precedent of the Chemical Weapons Convention and Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. As for information hazards, we want to use secure software to process this, as well as limiting information sharing to the secure panel of experts. And finally, although there might be concerns that it fails to effectively stop bioweapon use, we believe that the BRS is the best to target the root cause of pathogen development based on historical examples of whistleblowers providing information, as well as going through the proper, proper protocols for gathering evidence and testimony before launching an investigation. Our next steps would be to increase stakeholder engagement with key stakeholders such as nations, BWC members, private organizations, and more. We want to establish a legal and regulatory framework and gather the funding and resources needed to make this a reality. Then we'll move on to the technical development of such a platform and spread awareness of it at different conferences and training workshops. Finally, we'll move on to the implementation. As you can see in this theory of change, the process in which the implementation would follow is henceforth. The whistleblower reports an unethical bioweapon to the BRS. From there, it's verified if it is legitimate or not through the software model. It's either determined to be spam or passes the first round and goes to the expert panel in the BRS for review. Then it's determined to either not be a threat 
or to be a legitimate verifiable threat sent to the United Nations Security General for action. From that point, they can provide monetary and personal support to the whistleblower, send out a task force to investigate the matter, and even publicize the threat to bring greater international pressure onto the group or nation. So in conclusion, today we've discussed the growing threat of bioweapons and how it looms over our society. If we don't take action now to monitor and detect these bioweapons before they pop up, it might be too late when they actually do. Just one whistleblower can alert us to information that can protect millions of lives around the world. All they need are the resources and the support to make that happen. Thank you.